acids and bases. All right, so we're doing more acids and bases here. We're gonna actually do some reactions. More Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions are coming at you. Okay, so we already did sulfuric acid and water, but I wanna uh, jump back to that one because there's, there's more details in there that we need to uh, investigate. And then we know that this goes to, we already drew this out. We get those products out. So what's happening here is, of course, this hydrogen is going to be, the hydrogen on, on H2SO4 is going to be the one that gets transferred from H2SO4 to H3O+. And so that means that we need to make a sigma bond between the oxygen of water and the hydrogen on sulfuric acid. And we need to break a sigma bond between the hydrogen on sulfuric acid and the oxygen on sulfuric acid. So we're gonna break this oxygen hydrogen bond and we're gonna make a bond to this oxygen over here. Now, when we draw a mechanism, so this is when we show the flow of electrons in a chemical reaction mechanism is the flow of electrons in an organic reaction. When we draw a mechanism, always, every time, no exception, start at your base, right? Find your base, that's the place that you're going to start. Right? Your base is almost always going to have lone pairs or a pi bond that's going to act as the electron donor. Right? So in this case, our base is H2O. We already established that in the previous video. Right? So this is our acid. This is oops. This is our base. Right? Our base is H2O, and that means that we have some lone pairs on the on the oxygen. We don't have any pi bonds. So we're going to use these lone pairs first. So the first thing we're going to do is use these lone pairs to make a bond to this hydrogen, right? And so what we're showing here is that the oxygen is sharing its lone pair with that hydrogen. Now, the lone pair is staying on the oxygen, right? Those electrons aren't leaving the oxygen. Oxygen is too electronegative. It's not just going to give away its electrons. Right? But what it's doing is it's sharing those electrons with the hydrogen on sulfuric acid. Right? So think of it like the oxygen is kind of leaning towards, we can do this in terms of partial charges too, right? The oxygen is kind of leaning towards this hydrogen. Because if we look at the dipoles on these things, right, all the hydrogens in these molecules are going to have delta pluses. And the oxygen will have a delta minus, and then this hydrogen will have a delta plus, and this one will have a delta minus, right? And so there is an attraction here between the hydrogen on sulfuric acid and the oxygen of water, a delta minus attracted to a delta plus. And when they get close enough, this oxygen will share its electrons. And so if we were to stop this reaction kind of halfway, right, we would have an oxygen atom that is starting to have a bond between it and the hydrogen of sulfuric acid, right? So this is kind of a halfway thing. I'm going to put this in brackets because this isn't really real. So what has to happen in order to get from our halfway point to our final product, we have to break the sigma bond on the sulfuric acid, right? So this bond here has to break. And so where are those electrons going to go? We're going to break this sigma bond. That's two electrons. Those two electrons need to go somewhere. Where are they going to go? And this is where electronegativity and bond polarity comes to our rescue, right? This OH bond is already polarized such that most of the electrons are closer to the oxygen, right? The oxygen has a delta minus on it. And so when we break this sigma bond, we just kind of complete that process and we use this sigma bond to make a lone pair on this oxygen, right? So we're going to make a bond between OH. We're going to use a lone pair on oxygen, lone pair of oxygen. to make a sigma bond with hydrogen, right? And that's going to result then in 
H3O plus where that hydrogen or that oxygen only has one remaining lone pair, right? Because that lone pair is no longer a lone pair. And so this is going to be positively have a positive formal charge. Okay. When we break the sigma bond, we're going to do the opposite thing, right? We're going to take the sigma bond makes a lone pair on the oxygen, right? That's the second arrow. Right. And so then once we do that, we've got HOSO. We've got this, and now this oxygen has three lone pairs. It had two lone pairs before, right, from the beginning. Bad at drawing in lone pairs. Um, it had two lone pairs at the beginning because it's a neutral oxygen, and now it's added a third one. And so now it's got three lone pairs. And it's negatively charged. And so, of course, those are our two products. We have HSO4 minus and H3O plus. Now, when you draw this out, we don't draw this in this slow of a manner every time, right? If you were drawing out the mechanism for this reaction, we're going to do this one more time. You would just say this oxygen comes and gets this hydrogen and breaks that bond and pushes it onto the oxygen, right? You can do both steps. You can draw in your lone pairs if you want to be complete, which I probably should, use the lone pair to make the sigma bond, break the sigma bond to make a lone pair, right? We're doing two, right? There's two steps here, and they're the same two steps that we, uh, two steps in one step, two steps in one step. That makes perfect sense, right? And that gives us HSO4 minus plus H3O plus. So in bronsted lowry acid base reactions, we can draw both the making of the bond and the breaking of the bond in a single step. So if we do something else, let's do uh, sodium bicarbonate. So, so we have a sodium atom, but remember that in sodium we are in organic chemistry, we never think about sodium. Right? And the sodium is just not a reactive part of these reactions, right? So we have this, we got all kinds of other lone pairs. We have these two reacting together. In this case, the sodium bicarbonate is going to be the base because it's negatively charged. It has more electrons than uh, it needs, and so it's going to be willing to share them. And water is going to be our acid. And so instead of having water come and attack a hydrogen and make a bond to hydrogen, we're going to have this thing go, right? We're going to start from a lone pair, starting at negative charge, always a good idea. There's excess electrons here. Starting from a lone pair, we're going to make a sigma bond. And then our second arrow is we're going to break a sigma bond and create a lone pair on that oxygen. And so what we get out then is we get carbonic acid plus hydroxide sodium, right, NaOH. So once you've identified the acid and the base, right, you start from your base, right, always start from the base, start find the lone pair, find the pi bond there, and do that, right. Now let's do, let's do one more example. And you've got all your own pairs here and there, here and there, here and there. All right, so which one is our base and which one is our acid? Again, the charge kind of helps us out. We have negative charge on this oxygen. That's a good indicator that that's going to be our base, right? If that one's the base, that means this one must be the acid. And so we start here with our lone pairs. Here's our lone pairs, and we're going to go get a hydrogen. We're going to make a sigma bond between the oxygen of the sodium hydroxide and the hydrogen of acetic acid. And we're going to break the sigma bond, the OH sigma bond, and push those electrons onto the oxygen. We're going to produce sodium acetate and H2O. So H2O in this case is now going to be the conjugate acid. Right? The base becomes the conjugate acid, the acid becomes its conjugate base. Okay. So
So if there's negative charge in there, it's pretty easy. Find the negative charge, that's your base. Use those electrons to make a new bond to hydrogen. Break one of the sigma bonds and create a lone pair um, on your acid to create the conjugate base. Last example. Here's an example where instead of using um, a lone pair, we are going to use a pi bond as our base. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use pi bond as base. Because remember that we said early on, we can use either lone pairs or pi bonds as our starting point. They are sources of electrons. Here we have acetone, which may be an acid, may be a base. It's kind of one of those that's it's not entirely clear. But when we pair it with hydrochloric acid, HCl, of course, HCl is a very strong acid. And so it's very easy to say this one's an acid. That must make this one our base. And now you have a choice to make. You have lone pairs present, you have oxygen lone pairs, or you can use the pi bond. You can actually get there either way. The product that I'm going to draw is actually, you would get resonance structures of this product depending on where you started. I'm going to use the pi bond as a base because that's going to be an important step in a couple of reactions that we're going to do very soon. Right? So in this case, the pi bond goes and makes a sigma bond to the hydrogen. And then again, same thing here. We're gonna take this sigma bond, the HCl sigma bond, and turn it into a lone pair on chlorine. And so the chlorine is gonna end up with four lone pairs because it's a halogen. It had three lone pairs in its neutral form. And now we've created another one. So the conjugate base of HCl is Cl minus. Now, what's happening over here? When we use the pi bond as a base, we use the pi bond electrons, so there's two electrons in that pi bond, to make a sigma bond. But of course, the sigma bond can't connect the same things that we were make, that we were connecting before because, first of all, there's already a sigma bond there between the carbon and the oxygen, and we're bringing in this hydrogen on HCl. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a sigma bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. And if we think about this in terms of bond polarity, again, that makes sense, right? This oxygen will be delta minus, this carbon will be delta plus because the oxygen is more electronegative. So the oxygen is going to have more electron density on it. And so when we go to share electrons, the oxygen is the one that's going to hold on to those electrons better. Now, what happened to this carbon? This carbon basically ends up losing a pair of electrons because it had four bonds to it. It was nice and happy and formal charge neutral. But now when we break this pi bond, it loses those two pi electrons. And so this carbon becomes a positive charge. And so this is, of course, the conjugate acid of acetone. And now this is a carbocation. So we talked in resonance structures about how carbocations are, un are unstable and very reactive. One of the ways that we kind of take advantage of that is we can make carbocations by having pi bonds react as bases, right? So now we've made this very reactive carbocation. We can have other things react with it and do all kinds of fun stuff from there. But the point here is that when the pi bond reacts as a base, we often make carbocations. Right? You're almost always going to end up creating a positive charge at one of the atoms on the pi bond. And most often, because this is organic chemistry and we're mostly concerned with carbon, most often you're going to end up with a positively charged carbon. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different acid-base reactions. There's a whole bunch of different mechanisms, right? The takeaway from this video is the big one, the number one takeaway uh, the thing I hope you remember most of all is if you're drawing a mechanism, start from your base, right? Your base is going to have lone pairs or it's going to have pi bonds. And those are going to be the places where your electron sharing starts. That's where you start your arrow. The arrow goes to add to something else, right? So start from the base. Your base is going to have lone pairs or pi bonds on it, and they're going to add to whatever acid you're talking about, right? So if that's, um, if we're doing a Bronsted-Lowry acid base reaction, which all of these examples were, it's going to go add to a hydrogen. Okay, so we'll continue to do more on identifying acids and bases in the next couple of videos, and uh, come back for those.